Make that one for you. We're live for you. All right, everyone. As uh, as usual, please mute your line when you're not speaking and raise your digital hand when you've got questions. Coach Halfley, if you'd like to make an opening statement, you're welcome to begin. Otherwise, we're ready to get started. Yeah, just, um, you know, certainly not our cleanest game and, and, and probably not our best when we go back and look at it. But at the end of the day, we're five and three. The team that was picked to finish 15th in the ACC just won our fourth ACC game. And I told the guys in the locker room, I don't care what the score is. When we win a game, I expect the music to be blaring, the guys to be enjoying it with each other because they're hard. And that team fought hard and coming up to the dome wasn't going to be easy. Um, there's things we have to clean up. There's things I have to clean up. I certainly didn't coach my best game today, and I'll be the first to admit it. Um, you know, I thought Syracuse fought really hard. Uh, Dino, uh, Coach Babers and his staff thought they had a good game plan. They came out swinging and, and um, just love the way we finished the game at the end. The old line and the running backs getting the first down. Um, so we'll look at the tape closely and uh, we'll get better and we'll move on to the next game. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer. We'll take our first question from Rich. Hey, Coach, uh, just um, a couple of times you got into the red zone and the drives were going along smooth and then it just sputtered like on the 18 or the 17. I know Chikovic fell one time and there were some penalties, but is that what you mean by cleaning up, fixing that? Yeah, I mean, you know, truthfully, Rich, the way we ran the ball today, I mean, David Bailey had 125 yards, average five to carry. Travis Levy had 17, average 4.3 for 75 yards. I mean, you would look at those stats and think we scored 28 points easily, right? But we didn't. And um, that means we didn't do a good enough job. And it means Syracuse did a good job on defense stopping us. But, you know, the self-inflicted ones, like you said, Phil fell down. Actually, his feet got tangled with an alignment. It happens, right? I mean, it's one of those unfortunate things, like in the Virginia Tech game. Um, the personal foul um, at the end of the game where we could have put him away with a touchdown, that's, that's totally unacceptable. I told you I don't get mad when guys get fouls like on third down or if they're trying hard, but that's, that's not who we are and it won't be who we are. And those guys won't play if they do it. Um, I love CJ and you guys, I speak the world of him constantly, but he knows better than that. Um, but a lot of things moved us backward when we did. And, um, you know, again, just, just happy the way it turned out. We'll go next to Kevin Stone. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? I can, if you could speak up a little, I, I hear a lot of background, and then um, let me try and turn his volume up. Uh, you good now? Hold, hold on one sec. I got it. Okay, I can hear you better. That's my fault. I can, I can awesome. hear you. Um, so just the atmosphere in here today, uh, you guys are used to not playing without fans, but inside a dome, it was just very different. Um, did you kind of feel the same way? Yeah, were you here in the dome right now? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was like playing in our indoor at practice. It had this somber, quiet feel to it. Um, but that didn't affect the game. I mean, I'm not – I told you guys all year I wasn't going to make excuses. It didn't affect the game, but it was definitely a different atmosphere. Go next to Julian. Good job. How you doing? Good, Julian. You're here too, huh? Hanging out. Got the whole place to myself. Um, no, so – Pretty much weekly now, right? It's gotten to the point where you get asked about the running game and how it's used versus the passing game. Um, obviously, uh, Syracuse as the last rank run defense in the conference. But what about this game sort of presented itself as an opportunity to establish that? This is what we saw in film. Um, you know, we felt good with our scheme against their scheme and our offensive line was their defensive line. And, I mean, 47 carries for 191 yards and probably could have been more, you know? So just felt really good about it. Truthfully, I, and I keep saying this, I felt good about our run game since before the Virginia Tech game. And the, the sign of a good team is to take steps forward, not go backward, right? So once we saw that, we need to keep getting better. And um, proud of the way those guys did today. We'll go again to Rich. Hey, Coach, uh, just talk about those, those two defensive sequences in the fourth quarter, two sacks and, a, and an interception, and then a strip uh, a strip uh, ball and a fumble recovery. I mean, is that probably as good a defensive series as you've seen this year? Yeah, it was awesome. The way we came out, I thought, in the second half. And, I mean, really, Rich, the, I thought Tim and the defensive staff did a really good job. I mean, we held until field goals until the, the last drive of the game. Um, 
two takeaways. We, we keep talking about attacking the ball. The way Luke just kind of ripped it out. Um, and then Matry on the interception was a good call by Tim. Just, you know, you wish you could capitalize on them, right, Rich? You could have put them away. And, you know, we finished today. And I talked about finishing. And I kept saying it throughout the game, and we did finish. But we had the opportunity to really finish today, and we didn't. And, and, and when you play against a really tough opponent, um, man, when you, when you take the ball away, you got to make them pay and score points. And if you do that, then you can run away with games, and we need to do a better job there. Take our next question from Dan. Coach, uh, when you have a game like this that's more defensive and the points aren't necessarily there and the offense isn't necessarily as there as, as maybe you expected early, um, just what does that tell you about your team as the game goes on to, to have the defense lift up the offense and, and play through a game where the offense isn't necessarily scoring as many points as it would have? Yeah, Dan, that's a good question. And, and I think that shows signs of a good football team because, you know, a lot of times this year our offense is starting to score a lot of points, right? It's not always going to happen. I mean, you, you have games like this, and it's great to see the defense was able to step up and hold them the way they did um, to 13 points. So that's huge. And, again, I credit to Tim and, and the defensive staff and the players for stepping up today when the offense needed it. Let's go to A.J. Black. Isaiah McDuffie goes down early in the game, and Max Richardson has a game, the, an excellent game with two sacks, and John Lamott steps up as well. What did you see out of your linebackers after McDuffie went down and how did they pick up your defense? Yeah, I think Max just like we thought would take the step, his communication helping out, the way he tackled and ran. Um, McDuffie's a big loss. He's one of the better linebackers in the ACC and he, he gives us such the ability to blitz, cover backs, do a whole bunch of things. But a credit to John, he came in and did a really nice job. Um, and I mean that. It was good to see him get in there and I'm really proud of him. Let's go back to Julian. Just curious, right? Um, so, it, just by my eyes, it looked like Phil did a solid job of just taking what the defense gave. Like, he had deep shots down the field. He missed one over through it to Zay early. But otherwise, I think he spread it to like eight different targets and didn't have, I think, only had like three passes that went for longer than 20. Uh, how much of that is just like, all right, well, if, if those aren't there, if I'm not connecting on them, still make, make things go. Did that, did, was that a part of the defense? I just think it shows the signs of a quarterback who's developing. Um, don't force the ball they were dropping back so far and so deep and we saw that early in the game they clearly in the beginning of the game were saying you're not throwing the ball over our head so the way you check the ball down and um, a couple screen passes um, it shows the signs that he, he's getting better instead of trying to force things we had a couple where we almost hit and then he had the nice one before the half where he rolled out and he hit cj down the sideline i mean he was 20 for 29 pretty efficient 209 yards uh, one touchdown with the 140 yard pass. So, you know, not your typical 350 from them, but it's a pretty efficient day. So we've got time for two more. We'll go to Mark Frank. Coach, uh, two things if you could. Um, Syracuse one and six coming into the game. Could you talk about their effort and giving you guys all you can handle? And also comment on the Syracuse quarterback playing in his first game. Yeah, uh, good questions. I thought, uh, I thought they played really hard to the end. Um, so credit to Coach Babers. You know, I've been on teams like that where, you know, you guys don't play as hard, but but they did. And that's a credit to him and their staff uh, for keeping them motivated. And then I thought the quarterback did a nice job. You know, we saw him on film a little bit. He was 19 to 30 for 188. Um, you know, we sacked him, I think, four times. So again, credit to the, to the D line. But early on, we were kind of playing a little soft and he was taking what we were giving him. And then we just decided to be more aggressive to challenge him. Um, but we didn't want the ball to go over our head either. You know, that Syracuse team has a lot of wideouts that are really close to Welcome. Okay. Okay. Really good football okay. Thank you, Coach. All right, we got time for one more. Anybody? I'm good. All right, thanks a lot, Coach. Oh, thanks, guys. See you Tuesday. Have a safe trip back. Bye.